Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Today we're in Tustin, California in front of this impressive hangar. But what's even more impressive is what's inside. A vehicle that could take humanitarian aid, military missions, and shipping logistics to new heights, literally. So we're here with Tim, aeronautical engineer at Aeros. Tim, thanks so much for being with us. Hey, no problem. I think when people look at this, they instantly think blimp. How is this different than that? This vehicle takes all those technologies from a blimp, a plane, and a helicopter, and we merged all three of those modes of flight into one aircraft. So we took the good things from the helicopter vertical takeoff and landings, we took forward flight from a traditional plane, and then we took the propulsion and the fuel savings from a LTA aircraft and put those into this vehicle. So tell me some of the dimensions of these. These are just massive. This vehicle here is roughly 270 feet long. It's almost a football field long. It's 75 feet wide and almost 85 feet tall. And its total envelope volume is 700,000 cubic feet. Wow. And this is only half of what you guys are planning, right? Yeah. The next vehicle, the 66-ton vehicle, will be twice the size of this vehicle. So this vehicle, like a traditional LTA, is lighter than air, or it can also become heavier than air through its internal Kosh buoyancy system. On a traditional blimp, if I get off, I have to add ballast back to the vehicle. Sure, weight, essentially. Weight, yeah. yeah. This vehicle, if I offload the payload or the cargo, I don't have to externally add that back. It's a submarine concept. You add water to the vehicle, and the vehicle will dive. Push that water back Jettison out. Jettison out, yeah. and then you can go up. You can go back up. This vehicle, we add air to the vehicle on the internal, and it becomes heavier. We push that air out, and then we become lighter, and we can take off vertically. There's no more loading docks or ramps to load the vehicle. Essentially, you'd have the payload sitting in a field or outside in the warehouse parking lot. The vehicle would set down vertically, pick the payload up directly, and fly it to a destination. I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say we have a normal heating balloon. We have a little ring, heavy ring attached to the balloon. Yeah. That's to keep it from flying away. Right. So in this scenario, your balloon is your, your aircraft. Okay. And then the ring is your payload. So as soon as you cut this cord, the balloon flies away. Yeah. That is why airships today are not a feasible solution for, for payload. For payload car, for cargo payloads. Because the second you drop off 300 pounds, you have, to, whoop, you it's have up. to compensate quickly with sandbags. So now, with this kind of vehicle, we have that problem solved. We have some vessels that we call HPEs, helium pressurized envelopes. When that helium is pressurized inside this envelope, the aircraft is heavy. We release the helium, it becomes light, and we have the vertical takeoff engines that tilt 90 degrees to have a thrust aid, will okay. help us to take off. Once you reach your destination and you want to deliver cargo, as soon as we drop the cargo, we can make this vehicle heavy by compressing helium into our chambers, yep. and we let the air come into the bags, and we become heavy on demand. How does weather affect this kind of vehicle? That's actually a great question. This is a huge vehicle, and normally uh, vehicles like this are very weather sensitive in terms of wind or Definitely. in terms of storms. This vehicle is not meant to fly through storms. It's not like an aircraft that can fly above the storm or through it. This vehicle is meant to uh, try to avoid it. So since this is a very kind of slow aircraft compared to a normal jetliner, we can design a maneuver around the, uh, the storms. Right. So this vehicle has three structures to it. You have an internal structure, a skeleton. Like a frame. frame. Yeah, and that holds all of your engines. That'll support the payload and distribute it through. Then we have an aero shell, and that's our aerodynamics. That's how we maintain the shape for forward flight. That also allows us to give higher speeds than traditional blimps that are just filled full of helium. And then also we have a rigid skin on the outside of that vehicle to really tie everything together and make it a nice rigid shape. Major advantages to this vehicle for what we have now in the world is fuel consumption. This vehicle operates at one third to one fifth the cost of traditional air flight that we have today. And what allows us to really cut down on the fuel cost is it's still a traditional lighter than air aircraft. We're only moving the drag of the body, not lifting the body anymore. So tell me what's coming up next for you guys. After we get through with the 66 ton model and probably halfway through that, we've already started looking into 200 tons, 
500 ton models of this vehicle. Wow. And then going to the entertainment you know, possibilities of this vehicle, maybe it's a hotel or casinos, stuff like that. All right, so that's it for our time with the Aeroscraft. I think something that's really interesting is that much like EV technology, which was around a long time ago and is now re-emerging for the public, these guys are re-envisioning and re-imagining how the airship can affect logistics and other industries across the board. All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time.